It's a pleasure to be with you today at the CETEL for this new edition of the Rendezvous Littéraire Rue Cambon. For the past three years, we've been looking at close bounds between literature and women's emancipation, inviting writers and friends of the house to discuss their work and literary inspirations. Tonight, I'm thrilled to welcome writer Rachel Cusk. Rachel, I first encountered your work through your memoir, A Life's Work, published more than 20 years ago, but still so relevant today. This book was a revelation to me. I had never read anything so authentic and wise about motherhood. I'm also very pleased to welcome a dear friend of mine and an amazing woman, Naomi Campbell. Naomi, I know how precious all these subjects are to you. Needless to say, you have been a spokeswoman and an active advocate for these causes, supporting numerous charities working with women and children. Finally, I want to introduce writer and journalist Erica Wagner, who will be moderating our conversation, and the floor is now yours. To get us started, I'm going to read back a little quote from your own work, from an essay I love called Making House, about what it means to create a livable domestic space and what we might require from it. Rachel writes, to continue creating, a person perhaps has to maintain an essential discomfort in the world. Can you elaborate on the nature of this discomfort and how creation drives you? I think just at a, in, the, in the boldest sense, it's being outside rather than inside, outside the house rather than inside the house, and separate rather than together. Um, as an English phrase, being a joiner, which means, <laughs> are you the kind of person who joins clubs and groups? And, um, you know, essentially, any kind of artistic vocation means um, maintaining, I guess, a, a, a neutrality. That's probably the nicest way of putting it. Which, yeah, means not getting too comfortable with anybody or anything. And now, Charlotte, you said a little bit about this, um, and it's a simple and complex question, but what's really at the heart of your love for Rachel's work? When we read uh, Rachel's novels, um, she kind of um, pushes us to uh, inhabit that discomfort. And then in her style of writing, there's something quite honest and raw, and at the same time, very elegant and hypnotic as well. I'm always amazed how, within the most banal situations of day-to-day -day life, um, how you can raise such important philosophical questions. I mean, I think I always felt that my debt was, my duty was to reality and how the novel could show that um, and, and contain it. And as I lived and uh, experienced things and changed and uh, had more and more experiences of, that seemed to be consequences of my femaleness, I uh, realized that more and more of this <laughs> material couldn't go into that uh, novel structure. It seemed to me that there was a form called the memoir that you were allowed to <laughs> write about yourself in. And so for a while, I, I guess I rode both those horses and, and thought that this form was for this material and then this other form, much older form, you know, ruled by men, I guess, in a, in, despite what everybody says about Jane Austen. Naomi, how did those ideas of comfort versus discomfort speak to you? Well, discomfort for me breaks into vulnerability of unknowing. And as a mother of, a new mother of two and a half years, it's, you know, there's an insecurity that comes with that. Am I doing the right thing? There is no right and wrong, I know. Do I feel guilty because I'm a single mother and I'm working? There's so many questions that comes along with it. Well, now, moving smoothly on, Naomi is going to read a brief extract of a life's work. Rachel's account of becoming and being a mother. To be a mother, I must leave the telephone unanswered. Work undone, arrangements unmet. To be myself, I must let the baby cry. I must forestall her hunger 
or leave her for evenings out. Must forget her in order to think about other things. To succeed in being one means to fail at being the other. The break between mother and self was less clean than I'd imagined it in the taxi. And yet it was a premonition too. For later, even in my best moments, I never feel myself to have progressed beyond this division. There is not very much uh, writing about motherhood. Uh, there is certainly not much writing about motherhood by mothers. And the reason is that if you have a small child, uh, writing is about the last thing that uh, you are able to do. You know, for me, what a life's work really represents is the sort of time and space defying achievement of writing it, of actually writing it. And the fact that, you know, so much of representation is making a record and, you know, you ask yourself, what's the point of painting this picture or writing this book or, but, you know, if you, if you do it as it needs to be done, as it's meant to be done, you have made a record of, of something and maybe it's, it'll take a long time for the value of that to become apparent. And for me, the fact that that record exists is um, something to be proud of. When I discovered uh, Rachel's book, Life's Work, I was, you know, very um, moved by it because it's so rare to find someone that's actually living that experience and that can actually write about it because it's, it's a moment where it's extremely difficult to put words on. We're here, of course, with Chanel. So it's important to have a little discussion of fiction and style for our final extract. So Naomi is going to read from second place. As I already said, Jeffers, I had at some point given him upon the attempt to learn the language of clothes. And if someone had given me a uniform, I would have gladly have worn it every day. But instead, I devised a sort of uniform of my own in that everything I possessed was more or less the same. But none of it answered to Elle's description, which was to wear something that fitted. And as I rummaged hopelessly, hopelessly in the cupboard, I remembered that before I came to the marsh, my clothes had been more fitted. And that perhaps the last day on which I had worn something Fitted was the day I married Tony. Thinking this made me feel suddenly tearful and I had the awful feeling of an unraveling deep inside me. How did the language of clothes and the language of fiction connect for you? I think that the same question can be asked of literature as of fashion, which is, What's it for? <laughs> is it necessary? Do we need it? Does it serve any purpose? Uh, its lack of necessity is, in fact, its um, chief beauty and its chief purpose. And for things to exist without being um, entirely necessary is a pretty good def definition of art, I think. What does it mean to you, Naomi, to, to find something to wear that suits who you feel like being, either in a kind of general sense. It seems to me fashion and literature are both about imagination, imagining ourselves into other spaces. Definitely about storytelling. And storytelling's been the whole of my career. A lot of fun, a lot of um, creativity and um, characterization. You step outside of yourself for a moment. As <laughs> in back. literature. Yeah. What? <laughs> A pleasure it has been, and so enormous thanks to you, Charlotte, Chanel ambassador and the driving force behind the Rendezvous Literaire, the whole wonderful Chanel team, and of course, Rachel Cusk and Naomi Campbell.